Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called Delete Node in a BST. This question is part of Leak Code 75, a really good set of questions, 75 questions that you should do if you are interview prepping. There is Leak Code 75, Blind 75, and Top Interview 150. Depending on how much time you have, you can figure out which playlist you want to do. Now, this question is a really, really fun question. So, what is it? Well, we're given a root node reference of a BST and a key. We want to delete the node with the given key in the BST. Return the root node reference, possibly updated, of that original BST. Basically, the deletion can be divided into two stages. First, we search for the node we want to remove. And second, if the node is found, we delete that node. Now, this is a binary search tree. It's a data structure meant for searching. So number one is going to be fairly simple. And a BST differs from a regular binary tree in that every single node to the left of a given roots node is always going to be less than it. And everything to the right is always going to be greater than it. And that's going to hold true for every single node in the tree, no matter where we are, right? If we look at three, every single node to the left of it, that entire subtree is going to hold values less than that root node's value. And every node in the subtree to the right is always going to be greater than it. So number one, we need to search for that node we want to remove. And number two, if the node is found, we want to delete the node. Now, I think there should also be a step number three, which is re-updating the tree. I think that's the main part of the problem. That's where we have to get a little creative. And that's the fun part. So example one, we have five, three, six, two, four, and seven. We want to look for key three. We do find it over here, so we can go ahead and delete it. And we want to re-update our tree and return it. Now over here, there are two possibilities that we can do. We can either put four in place of three, or we could put two in place of three, because what happens once we delete node three? So we have our binary search tree right over here. Once we delete node three, this is what our structure looks like, right? Three is just gone from here. So we basically have two hanging subtrees. We want to somehow connect them together to form one cohesive tree with the remaining original BST that we have. So we could either put two as a left child of five and have four as the right child of two because that BST invariant still holds true. So if we had that, right, left is less than five, two is less than five, and then right is greater than two. So that's going to be correct. Or we could have the following, four being the left child of five and two being its left child to still maintain that BST structure. We just want to return that final root node of that updated binary tree. No matter which way we updated, there are multiple ways to solve this problem. Now, example two, we have five, two, six, four, seven, and the key we want to search for is zero. It's actually not in here at all. So we're just going to return that root node five and not have it updated in any way. And example three, we have nothing passed in as the root node. We don't get anything in there. We want to search for zero. There's going to be nothing to search for. So we just return nothing or none. And we have some constraints and a follow-up. Can you solve it? with the time complexity of O of height of tree. Yes, that is exactly what we're going to do. Now, before we ever write a line of code, before we start working on a problem, we always want to start off with examples. This makes sure we can really see what we want to do. So say I have the following example. This is my input to BST. And we can see this is a binary search tree, right? Every single node to the left of a given node is less than it. Everything to the right is greater than it. If we're at 10, left is less than it, right is greater than it. And a quick tip to keep in mind, if you ever need to find the smallest or greatest value, you just need to look on the two ends. The smallest value is always going to be the leftmost value, right? We're going to go left because we want a smaller value than this half of the tree. Then we go left again, then we go left again. This is our leftmost value, so it's the smallest value. In that same manner, the greatest value is going to be on our right. So we go to the right here. At this point, we're greater than this half of the tree. We go to the left again, we're greater than this half. Go to the left again, we're at 17. There's nothing to the right over here, which means 17 is our greatest node in this BST. Now say key is three. I wanna search for three, how do I do that? I'm gonna compare three with that root node's value. Three is less than seven, so it has to lie in this left half. I go to the left child, three is less than four, so I go to the left child again. Three is greater than two, so I go over here and we have found our key. So that's part one. That is done. Now deleting the node and updating it. Say instead of three, our key was four. So we have found it right over here. Now we want to delete it. So say we get rid of this. Well, now we have two hanging subtrees. How do we re-update our tree to make sure it forms one cohesive binary search tree? Well, if you notice, right, 
the entire left subtree of four is going to be less than four, and the entire right subtree is going to be greater than four. Is there a way we can somehow connect these two pieces? And if at any point you feel like you have the answer you're getting there, feel free to pause the video and give it a shot yourself, or even pause just to quickly think about it. It's going to be much more satisfying if you're able to approach it yourself. But basically, we know the entire left subtree is going to be less than that roots value. So if we want to connect these two pieces, we just need to take one subtree and add it as either the rightmost or leftmost point. There are two ways we can do this. We can either take the left subtree and merge it into our right or the right subtree into our left. So we're taking our right and merging it into our left. What do we want to do? We want to find the greatest node in our left subtree. So if I'm at two over here, this is that left subtree of the node I want to delete. To find that greatest node, I just keep going right until I can't anymore. So three is the greatest node in this left subtree. What I'm going to do is add as its right child this entire subtree. So I just took that piece and connected it as the right subtree because every node in this subtree has to be greater than three. And three was already the greatest node in that entire subtree. So this is still a valid binary search tree. This entire tree needs to be greater than two. Then this entire tree needs to be greater than three. And it's going to be because this was the right subtree of two's root. So at this point, all we need to do is return two as a left child of seven instead of what we had before, which was four. So once we make that connection, we can just return seven and that's going to be the root node of the new updated binary search tree with four removed. Now, another way we could do this is the exact opposite. So we have six, five over here. What I'm going to do is find the smallest value in this right subtree. So I want to go to the leftmost point. What's the leftmost point? That's five. There's nothing to go left further with. So five is the smallest value in this side of this subtree right over here, this hanging subtree that we have. So to its left child, I'm going to add this entire left subtree. So the right subtree now looks like this. It goes from six, five, then the left of five is two, the right of two is three, and the left of two is one. This entire subtree is less than five, which was already the smallest value in that entire right subtree. So now what we want to do is return six as the left child of seven. And six left is five, five left is two, and two is that entire left subtree of the node we wanted to delete. So what I want to do is find the node I want to delete and stop before I reach that node. So if I want to delete four, I'm going to stop before I get to four. That way I still have this entire subtree that I know I want to work with. Then I'm going to write a helper function that takes four as a left and right subtrees, merges them together and finds one root that I can return with the left and right combined and return that root as the child of its caller rather than returning four as its root. So let's go ahead and code this up and then do a full walkthrough to really see how it's going to play out. Now, first thing to code this up, I want to consider my edge cases. What if the root I'm being passed in is already none? We saw that in example three over here. So if not root, if it doesn't exist, I just return none. Now, what if the roots value is already the key? I don't need to keep searching for it. So what I'm going to do is write a helper function that takes the left and right subtree, merges them together and returns that root. So I'm just going to call that. So if root.val equals that key that we're looking for, I'm going to return self.helper with my root passed in. If that's not the case, I want to go searching for that key. So I'm going to set current equal to my root. Now, while root, while it is not none, I'm going to see if the key that I'm looking for is less than or greater than my root. So if key is less than root.val, I know I need to search in this left over here. So I want to see if the left child of my current root equals that key. So if root.left, if it exists, first of all, and if root.left.val equals the key that we're looking for, I'm going to set the left child of the root that I'm on to be what I get from this helper. So root.left is going to equal self.helper with root.left. In case, I'm just going to break out of my while loop. There's no reason to continue searching. But if that's not the case, if this is not true, if that left value doesn't equal the key, I want to keep searching. So I'm going to say my root equals my left child. So root equals root.left. Now, what if the opposite is true? What if key is greater than the roots value if we need to search for 12, for example? So if that's the case, else 
I'm going to do the same thing on the right side. So if root.right, if it exists, and root.right.val equals key, well then root.right is going to equal self.helper with root.right passed in, and we break at that point. If that is not true, so if we are searching for 12, right, we see that we're in this else, and root.right is true, and root.right.val doesn't equal the keyword searching for, which is 12. So what I'm going to do is set root to equal root.right. So we go back in this while loop at this point, root is 10. And we'll do the same thing, right? Key, which is 12, is not less than 10. So we go in this else. We see that the right child exists. And the right's value equals the key that we're looking for. So we're going to assign our roots right to be what we get from this helper that we're going to write. So the only thing left to do is write out this helper. And of course, once that's done, once we write out our helper, we just return current in the end. Once that modification is done, right, once we have a whole cohesive BST, we want to return the root of that modified BST, which we get set to be current. Because root's value we're updating and overriding, but current still points to that original root that was passed in. So we just return that at the end. Now, for the fun part, how are we writing this helper? So I'm going to be defining self.helper over here. Helper, it takes in self and a root. So what is the purpose of this function? If you recall, what are we passing in and what do we want to return? We're going to be passing in the root node that we want to delete and that corresponding subtree. So say we're back at our example and we want to delete key four. So we're given the root we want to delete and it could have a left and right subtree. We just want to merge that together and return one node. Now, base cases first. What if the left child of the node we want to delete doesn't exist? So if root dot left is none, we are going to return root dot right. So if we wanted to delete eight, root dot left doesn't exist. So we're just going to return nine, which means this is what our updated BST would look like. We would just return nine, and this would be the child of whatever helper was called with. Now, what if right also didn't exist? So say we're at eight, this is what we want to delete. Root.left is none, so we're returning root.right. That's fine, it's going to be none. This is just not going to have a child any longer. We're deleting that last node, so we're going to have none as a child anyway. That's fine. Now, if root.left is not none, there is a value there. Well, now we want to see what if root.right is none. So if root.right is none, we're going to return root.left. And that's definitely going to have a value there. So we're just going to return that left side. So say we were over here, root.left isn't none but root.right is none. So we're just going to return five. And remember, this was the node we wanted to delete. So we're returning five to its parent, which means four is right is now going to point to five. Now, what if neither are true? What if both left and right exist? So again, we're at that example with four. Left exists and right exists. Remember, we have two ways to go about this. We find the largest value in our left side and to its right, we add that entire right subtree or we find the smallest value in our right subtree and to its left, add that entire left subtree. Doesn't matter which way we do this. I'm just going to find the largest on that right side. So in order to do that, I first need to figure out what my left and right are. So left is going to equal root dot left and right is going to be root dot right. And my current is my root that I have right now. So current is four, left is two, right is six. And I am finding the largest value on my left. So find largest on left, just so we don't get confused. How do I find the largest value? Well, I just go as far right as I can. So while left dot right, while a right child exists in this left subtree, I'm just going to go to it. Left equals left dot right. So right now we have a right child, so we go to it. Our left is now three. This no longer has a right, so we found our largest value. Now what I'm going to do is to that left, add a right side. So left dot right is going to equal that entire right subtree. And we have that stored right over here. So left dot right equals right. So this is what this looks like right now. And all we need to do is return this subtree right here. So I'm going to return current dot left. So what is current? That's four. I'm just returning that entire subtree. And this is going to be the child of seven. This is going to be a direct connection, which means any connection over here is just lost. They're deleted nodes. And we have that updated modified binary search tree. So let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. Now talking about space and time complexity for time, we wanted a solution that was O of height of tree. And that's exactly what this is. We're only going as far down as the height of our tree. Those are the only nodes we are covering. There's really nothing else 
to do here. And for space, this is going to be constant. We're not really keeping track of anything except left and right nodes. Now, before leaving, let's just do a super quick walkthrough to make sure all of this is coming together. I'm just going to take example one. If you don't want to see it, if you got what you needed out of this video, feel free to stop watching and try it out yourself. But if you want one more walkthrough just to put everything together, keep watching. So we're going to pass in input five over here and our key is going to be three. First thing we do is check if we don't have a root. That's not true. We do have a root, so we don't return none. Next, we check if root.val equals that key. It does not, so we don't return the helper either. We set our current to be root. So current right now is five. So while five over here, if key is less than root.val, that is true, right? Three is less than our current roots value. We go in this if statement. So if root.left, that is true, the left child of this root exists, and root.left.val equals key, that is also true. We're going to set root.left to be what we get from the helper function of root.left. So we're making this call over here. Five's left is going to be what we get from the helper call of three. So now going into this helper, and I'm going to move this down just so we can see it and work with it at the same time. So we're passing in this helper with this root. Now our new root is going to be three. So we're going to say this is our root and we check root.left is none. That's not true. Roots left is not none. And roots right is also not none. So we don't go into either of these if conditions. We set current equal to root. So both current and root point to three right now. And left is going to be roots left and right is going to be roots right. So left is here and right is here. Now while left dot right. So while left has a right child. Well, there's nothing in this right, so we don't go in this while loop at all. And all we're doing is setting our left's right to equal this right. So left now has a right child of this four right over here. And all we do is return current dot left. So what's current left? Well, actually, we didn't even need to define a current root is staying where it is. So we can actually just get rid of this and just return root dot left. It's going to be the same thing. So we're going to return roots left, which is two and four to our caller. So how did we call this? We call this with fives left and we're setting fives left to equal this roots left. So fives left is just going to be two and four right over here. So this is what that subtree looks like. Now we're out of this helper function, right? We called it right over here. So we're going to break out of this while loop as well. Once we're broken out, all we have to do is return current, which pointed to root as well. So we're just returning this modified tree and that is it. So we just went ahead and solved delete node in a BST. If you have any questions whatsoever, of course, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.